Our analysis on the constraints to growth is what has influenced the policy priorities of the Central Bank of Nigeria and the creation of our intervention programs, such as the Anchor Boras program, the Commercial Agricultural Credit Scheme. While monetary policy may not be able to solve all structural challenges, but by influencing financial conditions under which farmers, like our small and medium enterprises and manufacturers, are able to access credit, we can help to support growth in the agriculture and manufacturing sectors, as well as our non-oil exports. These measures can provide meaningful support to the efforts of the government, which are aimed at promoting more sustainable growth of our economy. It will also ensure that our economy is less susceptible to changes in oil price. I recognize that some of our policies have been construed as protectionist in nature, and I agree that they have indeed been protectionist. But we need to keep in mind that leaders are first and foremost accountable to their own citizens and their nation. No leader and no, no, no country sees its own citizens suffer. No responsible leader would allow the level of unemployment and insecurity to rise in his country. Industries dead, and we all know what I mean, industries dead, and allow inflation, prices, and allow smugglers and those who are bent on dumping goods into their country in order to increase the level of unemployment, increase youth, youth restiveness, kill its industries. No great leader sits idle. And that is the reason the Monetary Policy Committee of the Central Bank, even at its meeting held this week, came out very, very strongly to say that the Monetary Policy Authority supports Nigeria government's border protection. And I think any right-meaning Nigerian, anybody who, who wishes that the level of unemployment in Nigeria must reduce, any right-meaning leader who means well for his country or for Nigeria, for Nigeria today, who wishes to see our industries grow, you do not have a choice but to support the decision of the Nigerian government to protect its borders. All these examples I have cited are gentle reminders that policymakers must concentrate their efforts on making their own citizens lead better lives and worry less about their neighbors. Worry less about your neighbors. Think about your children first before you think about a neighbor. This is exactly where the CBN and the Monetary Policy Authority stand today on the current border closure. And given that it has created jobs for our people, it is creating jobs for our people, particularly for our rural communities, where close to 65% of our people reside, and it is leading to the resuscitation of our local industries in Nigeria, there we will stand. Our priorities in 2020. Over the next year, we intend to support greater economic growth, price and exchange rate stability by engaging in the following measures. On monetary policy, our stance will remain judicious, research-driven, adequate, and supportive of the real economy, subject to underlying fundamentals. The current tight stance is expected to continue 
in the near term, especially in view of rising inflation expectations. Although we, though we will act to appropriately adjust the policy rates in line with unfolding conditions and outlook, the CBN will continue to ensure that the policy interest rate is delicately set to balance the objectives of price stability with output stabilization. On GDP, with our continued efforts at driving indigenous production in high impact real sector activities, especially agriculture and manufacturing, as well as our efforts in improving access to credit, gross domestic product growth is expected to pick up in the last quarter of 2019. This will be buoyed by the anticipated budgetary spending in the near term. From 2.28% in the quarter, in, during the third quarter of 2019, growth is expected to quicken to about 2.5% by the fourth quarter of 2019. On inflation, we expect it to rise slightly to about 11.7 to 11.8% by the end of 2019 and then moderate thereafter, supported by our efforts at improving domestic production of staple food items. On exchange rates, although the CBN has so far managed to, to maintain exchange rate stability, the current capital flow reversals from emerging markets is expected to continue to exert considerable pressure on market rates. Notwithstanding these pressures, the CBN is determined to maintain its stable exchange rate policy stance in the near to the medium term, given the relatively high level of reserves. Access to finance. As noted earlier, we have provided shared agent licenses as well as payment service licenses to three companies in 2019. Our objective is to support the development of a robust payment infrastructure that will bring more Nigerians who do not have access to financial services into the financial system. The provision of, provision of licenses to several players will help support innovation and competition as all parties work to increase their customers' base. Nigerians in underserved location will have access to cost-effective payment services, cash-in and cash-out facilities, and savings products. We do intend to sustain these efforts in 2020 as part of our plan to reduce plans to reduce our financial inclusion rate to under 20% over the next year. Access to credit. As part of our efforts to improve access to credit, for farmers and our small and medium scale enterprises, we intend to deepen our intervention efforts through our Anchor Boras program, commercial agricultural credit scheme program, and the real sector support funds, among other programs. This is necessary if we are to make sufficient progress in stimulating growth in our economy, particularly in the agriculture and manufacturing sectors. Our ultimate goal is to develop a viable exchange platform that will improve the ability of our farmers towards meeting the raw material need of our local manufacturing and industrial sector. Banks and other financial institutions will then be able to lend to farmers and small and medium enterprises on the back of such transactions. We have also increased the loan to deposit ratio of 65%, along with restrictions on access to the open market operation window. In order to ensure financial institutions are supporting the growth of the real sector. As we all know, Nigerian banks are some of the most, and pardon me, reluctant lenders in major emerging markets. With an average, loan to deposit ratio of below 60%. I say this because in comparison with peers, with our peers, 
South Africa has loan deposit ratio of 90% and about 76% in Kenya. Our loan to deposit ratio rate is therefore considered very low today. Our efforts so far are however yielding fruit as gross credits increased by 5.3% to 16.4 trillion naira, about 45, 46 billion dollars at the end of September from just May in 2019. In order to ensure that this measures, measure does not result in a deterioration in the quality of assets and loans held by banks, we have also deployed measures to improve credit risk assessments by supporting the development of a consumer credit database, which will aggregate data from different sources in order to determine the credit worthiness of borrowers. This initiative is being worked on in partnership with the credit bureaus and the banks. Furthermore, the banks are now able to impose standing instructions on the account of borrowers in other banks. We believe this action will enable banks to provide loans to borrowers with good credit profiles, as this system will penalize serial defaulters. On non-oil exports, we intend to address some of the barriers faced by non-oil exporters in producing goods for the export market. Working with the Nigerian Export Import Bank, we will work to improve access to the 500 billion facility designed to support the growth of Nigerian export, exports. I know we have said so about two, we've been saying this for about two years, but we, will, we, we intend to move with vigor to see to the achievement of this goal. Part of our emphasis will be on increasing export of value-added goods relative to raw, raw materials. Firms that have access to these facilities will be able to obtain loans at single digits. This would enable them to expand their production lines and improve the quality of their products so that they can compete effectively with their peers from other parts of the world. Furthermore, in order to produce the time lag required to export non-oil products, we have launched an automated NXP portal, which will reduce the time it takes to process critical export court documents from two weeks to less than 10 minutes. This measure will support efficiency gains for our firms primarily focused on non oil export market. We believe by taking these actions, we can improve Nigeria's non-oil export earnings from close to 2 billion in 2019 to 4 billion in 2020. On consumer protection, more importantly, we are to if we are to achieve re reasonable success in improving access to finance and credit to a large portions of Nigerians, it is also important that these Nigerians are protected from unfair banking and lending practices. Our consumer protection department, as well as the banking supervision department, will continue to maintain oversight on banks and other financial institutions in order to ensure that the rights of banking customers remain protected. As the monetary and fiscal authorities continue to work tirelessly to support the recovery of our economy, I'd like to reiterate that Nigeria indeed is indeed open for foreign investors who are keen to support our efforts at unlocking the immense opportunities in our economy, knowing that it offers mutual gains to both the investor and the nation. Investors can be assured that their investments in Nigeria will be duly protected by the authorities, as we are fully aware of the various advantages they can provide our economy in terms of capital and technological know-how. We hereby reaffirm our commitment to investors that Nigeria indeed remains open to business.